Okay, today we're going to start week six of the physics solutions. And this week we're talking about uniform circular motion. And there are a few uh, definitions that we have to make sure we understand. And a couple of things I want to make sure you all get. First of all, um, when we talk about velocity now, we're going to be talking about two different kinds of velocity. V is, represents linear velocity. And omega represents rotational. And rotational velocity is delta theta over delta time, theta being the arc that is circumscribed by the uh, rotational motion. And linear velocity is still the distance or displacement. In most cases, we'll be talking about distance. And so when you see me write this, this omega, this is a lowercase omega, we're talking about rotational velocity. Along the way, I'm going to be circling certain formulas that are important and certain truths that are important. I just want to make sure you, um, you get those. So the first problem is problem number three. And problem number three states that an automobile, automobile has a uh, radius tire that is... Um, 0 0.260 meters and it travels a total distance of 80,000 kilometers which is 8 times 10 to the 4th kilometers which would be 8 times 10 to the 7th meters multiply that by a thousand and it, it's asking how many revolutions do tires make neglecting any backup or change in radius wear blah 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 well, what I did here was I calculated first what a full uh, uh, re revolution is, and that's going to be 2 pi r, the circumference of that circle. And if you put in the 0 0.26 uh, number, you get 1.6333, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, meters per revolution. And so then you can take that, and <clears throat> that's going to be 1.63 times 10 to the minus 3 kilometers per revolution. And then, and then with that number, you have 80,000 kilometers. If you multiply those two together, you end up with, I'm sorry, 1 over that. You multiply those two together and you get um, 5 times 10 to the 7th revolutions. Now let's make sure you see here that you have one revolution is equal to 1.63 times 10 to the minus 3 kilometers. And you multiply that times 80,000 kilometers and then the kilometers cancel out and you by dividing this into that you get the answer here okay the next problem is problem number six and problem number six states the following in lacrosse a ball is thrown from a net that's on the end of a stick by rotating the stick and and the forearm about the elbow if the angular velocity, which is omega, if the angular velocity of the ball about the elbow is 30 radians per second, 30.0 radians per second, and the ball is 1.3 meters from the elbow joint, so that means the radius of the arc or the circle is 1.30 meters, then what is the velocity and by that, they're meaning linear velocity of the ball. Well, linear velocity is related to the angular velocity by multiplying it by the radius of the circle. And this is one of your formulas you need to remember. So that means you would take 30 times 1.3, and you end up with 39.0 meters per second. 39.0 meters per second is the linear velocity in this situation. The next problem is problem number 11. 
And in this case, we're now talking about centripetal and acceleration. So there's a couple of formulas here that I'll, I will be showing you. The key formula is that the centripetal acceleration is equal to the velocity, linear velocity divided by, squared divided by the radius. That's a formula you'll want to keep. The centripetal felt acceleration is equal to the linear velocity squared divided by the radius. And then obviously the centripetal force is going to be m times that, so it's going to be m v squared over r. And that's another formula you'll want to remember. The centripetal force is equal to m v squared over r. Now centripetal by centripetal acceleration, we mean the acceleration that's directed to the inside of the circle in an object that's flying around a circle. The, the centripetal acceleration is that important component of the acceleration that's directed toward the center of the circle. And similarly, the centripetal force is the force that's directed toward the center of the circle. So let's take a look at this first problem. And the first problem states that a runner taking part in a 200 meter dash must run around the end of a track that has a circular arc with a radius of 30 meters. And so if he completes the entire dash in 23.2 seconds and runs at a constant speed throughout the race, what is the magnitude of his centripetal acceleration as he runs the curve portion of the track? Well, he, his time is 23.2 seconds, and the dis total distance he, he covers is 200 meters. And so his, his linear velocity is going to be 200 divided by 23.2, which in this case is 8.63 meters per second. 8.63 meters per second. Then we use this formula for centripetal acceleration, and we put 8.63 in, squared divided by 30, and the centripetal acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared. Now you're going to say, how is it that if his, if his velocity never changes, how is it that he has an acceleration? And that is the key to understanding centripetal acceleration is there's no change in the magnitude of the velocity, but there's a change in the direction. So the centripetal acceleration represents the change in the magnitude or the change in the direction that occurs as he goes around that curve or as something goes around in a circle. And so that's how an object that does not change its velocity can have a form of acceleration. So let's take a look at another problem in this group, number 13. And number 13 states that a propeller in a World War II fighter plane has a diameter of 2.30 meters, so that means the radius is going to equal 1.15 meters. And I always change things to radius because there's very few formulas that require the diameter, and there are a lot of formulas that require the radius. What is the angular velocity in radians per second if it spins at 1,200 revolutions per minute? So it's spinning at 1,200 revolutions per minute. Okay. Now, one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. That's, that's something you need to remember, okay, or put on your card. A full circle is 2 pi radians, okay? And so you have 1,200 revolutions in a, per minute, and then one minute is equal to 60 seconds, and one revolution is 2 pi radians. And if you do the math here, you have 1,200 divided by 60, which is pretty easy. That's 20 times 2 pi. And if you do the math, you get 126 radians per second. And that's the angular velocity in these conditions. 
The second part of the question states, what is the linear speed of its tip at this angular velocity of the plane it remains stationary? So the, the linear speed is, is converting this uh, angular velocity to a linear velocity. And we remembered that the, the velocity is equal to the angular velocity times r times the radius. And so we take 126 times the radius, which is 1.15 meters, and that's going to give us 145 meters per second. And then the last question is, what is the centripetal acceleration of the propeller tip under these conditions? Okay, the centripetal acceleration is equal to, and there's two different formulas you can use. The, the one here is V squared over R, so that's going to be 126, whoops, sorry, 145 squared divided by 1.15. And so if you do the math here, you get 1.82 times 10 to the fourth meters per second squared. That thing is changing direction very rapidly. And that's why this is so high. And if you convert that to G, you just divide this number by 9.8 and you'll get 1.85 times 10 to the third g okay the next problem that we're going to do we go into a different part of the chapter we're talking about centripetal force you'll remember that i said the centripetal force is going to equal to the centripetal acceleration times the mass f equals ma so that's going to be mv squared over r. So the first problem, number 23, states that at 22.0 kilogram, 22.0 kilogram child is playing on a merry-go-round that is rotating at 40 revolutions per minute. And it says, what centripetal force must she exert to stay on if she is 1.25 meters from the center? So the first thing we have to do here is to convert this angular velocity to radians per second. And to do that, you have 40 revolutions per minute times one minute is 60 seconds. That's, that's why I t told you to remember this, this two pi radians per revolution. If you do the math here, you get 4.1888, etc. radians per second. And then the other formula for centripetal acceleration, if you substitute, remember that V is equal to omega times R. So you can substitute for V here, omega, you can, you can substitute omega R here. So that would be M times omega squared times R squared over R. So this is gonna be M omega squared over R and the, this R cancels out. And so centripetal or centripetal force can also be M omega squared R. So we can put in 22 times the calculated omega we got here, 4.1888 times R, which was 1.25, and this is squared. And if we do the math here, we get 483 newtons. So we can use this. This is another formula. These two are formulas you need to keep in your in your car. You'll, you'll be getting formulas that have both linear velocity and uh, angular velocity, and it's, and it's reasonable to keep track of both of those. 
The second part of the question is, what centripetal force does she need to stay on the amusement park merry-go-round that rotates at three revolutions per minute if she's eight meters from the center? So what we're basically doing is now changing from 40 revolutions per minute to three revolutions per minute. And from a radius of point, um, where is that radius? Point one two point one two five to a radius now of eight point zero. So three revolutions per minute times one over sixty times two pi gives us an angular velocity now, or actually we could of you know, zero point three one four radians per second. Then we put the same, we do the same calculation. The mass is 22.0. 0 0.314 is the new angular velocity, and that's squared, and the new radius is 8.0. And we come up with a new calculation of 17.4 newtons is the new uh, centripetal force. And then the last question is, Compare each force with her weight. Well, if her weight is going to be 22.0 times 9.8, so her weight's going to come out as 216 newtons. So if we compare that to this first calculation, 483 divided by 216, that comes out to be approximately two and a quarter times her weight. And the second one, if we take her weight divide 17.4 by our weight, we get 0 0.0806.